Welcome to Get It Done Entrepreneurs, where we talk with founders of companies who bet on themselves in one. My name is Rich LeBrun, and I am the founder and CEO of LeBrun Advisory Group. You can find us at rlebrun.com. Our mission is to help our clients build wealth through business ownership. Stick around to the end of the show and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest. Our special guest today is Rebecca Monet. She's president and chief scientist of Zoracle Profiles. Zoracle is a franchise-specific solution provider offering a suite of customizable assessments. She is fascinated with neurology and neuroeconomics and human performance as it relates to business success. Rebecca is the inventor of meta-analysis methodology used in Zorico's spot-on profile and spot-on eclipse reports, which categorically compare prospective franchisees to a franchise system's top performers. Zorico Profile's meta-analysis methodology provides insights no singular profile, survey, algorithm, or assessment can and has changed the way in which franchisors select franchisees. They integrate seven statistically validated sciences, sciences and use both normative and in, ipsative scoring methods, which Rebecca will have to explain what that is. <laughs> Zorico Profiles tools, profile tools provide greater accuracy in predicting business success than companies using single science or single scoring methods. Their spot-on science determines compatibility and predicts performance. Zorical tools reduce recruitment and support costs while increasing franchise validation and performance. Rebecca is also the host of the Franchise Woman podcast, and she's recently moved and now is living in Northwest Arkansas. Rebecca, welcome to the show. I'm so glad to be here, especially with you, Rich. I, you I do love face to face. I know this is great, and I sure and sincerely love talking with you and sharing business. Uh, thoughts and just life thoughts together. We got a chance to know each other over the years. But Rebecca, there's a story behind Zorico and behind Rebecca. And I think our listeners always like to hear the story. How did you get into business for yourself? What was some of the thoughts? Was it was it your first business venture? Was it voluntary or involuntary? Uh, tell us a little bit the story about how you got to where you are today. So my uh, life start. I wanted always to be a psychologist and help people. So I went into private practice many years ago, and just coincidentally, I worked almost exclusively with business owners and looked at what between the ears and that gray matter was causing some to be successful and some to struggle, why some were you know, a good fit for entrepreneurship and some just weren't. And I loved working with entrepreneurs. And so my practice continued to build. And then one day, one of my uh, clients said, Rebecca, these things that you are teaching us, can you teach in a larger group? And I said, well, let's try it. And so he put together a um, presentation. Basically, I walked into a hotel. Rich, there were 300 entrepreneurs in that room, I was expecting 12 at a table is what I was expecting. So it was my first experience of um, public speaking. And I all of a sudden go, this is exactly where I need to be. I just loved it. From there, I went into becoming a trainer, traveled all over the world, teaching entrepreneurs um, how to take hold of the heart and mind to build uh, their businesses. However, I was also a single mama, and I had one wayward teenage daughter, and all of this travel was getting way too much. So suffice it to say, I'm like, I got to do something different, right? I can't, I can't worry about my daughter here and her dad sort of keeping an eye on her. And so I, I went to bed one night, and I prayed, and I said, Lord, what next? I can't be traveling anymore. What next? I got to do something different. So I went to sleep, woke up the next morning. And I don't know if you've ever had an experience like this, but it was like, boom, for me. And I had two words, business broker. 
And I'm like, what the heck is a business broker? I didn't know what that was, right? So I reached above the refrigerator because that's where everyone kept their yellow pages back then, right? It was 1992 or 1993. And I started flipping through the yellow pages and looked up business brokers and voila, there were four of them in San Diego, which is where I was living. I called every one of them. And I basically said, my name is Rebecca Monet. Uh, God told me to give you a call. <laughs> You don't have to pay me. I just want to know what you do. I want to follow you around. And long story short, um, three of the four thought I was nuts. The fourth one saw, I think, just free labor, right? That he could put me to work and not have to pay me. And his name was Howie Bassick. And Howie was the inventor of franchise brokering. And at the time, it was just him and four other guys up the coast of California. And I did just what I said. I went into his office, did whatever he wanted me to do, but I'm also a scientist. So it was all about observing him. This little guy, as wide as he was tall, doing deal after deal after deal. And I'm like, what is he doing? Right. How is he talking people into going into business? Right. What is he doing to cast such a wonderful vision and getting people to grasp it and spend money? you know, and put their future into something. So I started to study him. And of obviously, as a therapist, I had been using psychographic assessments for years. And um, I started to share with him what he was doing, why he was doing what he was doing was working, and how he could do it even better from a psychographic perspective, from a human behavior perspective, from how the mind makes decisions perspective, Long story short, we put our efforts together, him teaching me franchising, me teaching him human behavior, and created the first uh, psychographic assessment uh, in the franchise space. And as they say, the rest is history as I continue to learn over the last 30 years more and more about business ownership and what makes some people great franchisees and entrepreneurs and others just just not a fit they need to stay in the corporate environment so that's my story um one that i i love sharing because god was such a big part of it for me and i trust that that voice yeah you know and you've been a, a benchmark for that ever since i've known you you you're known to help us figure out what if our clients should be franchise owners or not um it's always that secret sauce, right? And uh, like, really, can I just be an entrepreneur? Yes, but could I be a successful entrepreneur? Maybe not. Uh, there is a lot of science behind that, which you just love doing. And I love learning all about the science behind this. And so God definitely has you in the right place. Mm -hmm. uh, but looking back, so you've been doing this for a while now. And mm -hmm. uh, um, if you were talking to yourself back then, knowing what you know today, and I guess being a therapist as well, uh, how would you play those skills? What would you be telling yourself that you would do differently? Differently? Wow, that's a great question. I um, I think there's two things, actually. One is to be better at trusting that still small voice. Um, because I made several very horrible decisions early on. And... I knew going in something was off, right? But because I couldn't measure it scientifically with numbers and assessments and calculations, I could still feel something's off here. But I overrode that intuition or that still small voice. And I went ahead with a couple of things that were drastic, horrible that happened in my uh, business. So I think that's number one. I need to be better at that. Probably still today, I could get better at that. And then the second thing is coming out of the chute when you're building a business. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a wild, crazy inventor. I'm an entrepreneur. And we tend to be a little bit of a lone ranger, right? We're, we're thinkers and creators. I should have built a team around me much sooner. 
um, people that could fill in the gaps where I am weak, that could grasp the vision and put in the ducks, so to speak, in a row so I could execute more, more beautifully. Um, I think one of the things that we have as entrepreneurs is sort of a different mindset, the ability to take risks and, you know, kind of multi-talented that sometimes we don't realize how much we need people. Yeah, I love that. So um, I just want to go back to number one, trusting that small voice. We, you know, we we all we call it different things in our life, but I know what you're referring to. What have you put in place to help you uh, pay more attention to that small voice if you when you hear it today? Well, you know, previous to my my story previously would let you know that I listen better when I'm in an alpha state or theta state. So um, it's now to as I'm going to sleep, you know, say something feels a little off here. Um, could you clarify for me? And then usually through the night, I will get a dream or a voice or a sense and uh, that will clarify what exactly is off. When things are off, it doesn't mean don't do it. It means pay attention to certain things, get get things in order. And so I'm better at, at night um, asking for that direction and then paying attention to what I'm hearing first thing in the morning. I tend to run 90 miles an hour the minute I wake up until late, late at, at night. And so the busyness, Rich, has us not here. So we have to be still. We have to be quiet to hear it. We'll get a sense, right? I get actual um, kind of pressure in the chest when that thing comes. But because I'm so busy, I sometimes ignore it. So you have to be still to be able to hear that voice. Um, so it's a discipline. It's definitely a discipline. Um, and again, something I can get better at. Yeah, I think we all can. But you know, especially founders, CEOs of company who lay awake at night, uh, worried, uh, in, in charge of direction of the companies, which we'll talk about later. Um, it's hard. It's really helpful to have that small voice guiding you. But sometimes you said the busyness and the stress has kind of drowned out that that whisper. Um, Rebecca, you've done some really good things too, because you are very successful. You're very well treasured and well known in our industry. But what are some things, what are some good decisions that you made to help you get to where you are today? Um, I think the number one decision is to use my strengths, right? Um, instead of going, oh, what business can I start? You know, it was to go with what my strengths are and build the business around the strengths, right? I, I understand humans. That's a strength, right? I'm a good facilitator and a good uh, educator and trainer. That's a strength that I possess. And being Swiss, born and raised, <clears throat> I have a neutral approach to the world. So I'm good at the analytics where I can actually take data that I'm observing or measuring and not make any judgments about it till I run the numbers, right? So there's the strengths that I have that was, could be easily turned into uh, a business. So I wouldn't try a different business that didn't include those attributes. Yeah, you know, and you mentioned earlier, <clears throat> you're building teams sooner. Well, in order to build good teams, you have to know your own strengths and weaknesses to build the right team around you. So I think that's very profound what you said. I want to shift a little bit to, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tee up the commercial break but uh, in a second here. But a lot of people who are listeners um, have seen things like the DISC test and Myers-Briggs and other type of tests like that. I'm sure uh, corporations use these. So in the commercial break, uh, not only to whatever you want to promote, you feel free to do that, but maybe you could share with our listeners some differentiations in, uh, in your particular testing uh, process than maybe some of the other ones that they've uh, run across. 
So there's some really good personality assessments out there, two of which uh, you mentioned, uh, the DISC, the Myers-Briggs uh, are the most popular. Um, all assessments, personality assessments, are based on either Dr. Carl Jung's work, that would be your MBTI, the Myers-Briggs, as you called it, uh, or it would be based on William Marston's work, which would be the DISC, the Harrison, the Predictive Index, and many others. So what makes our tool at Zorical Profiles different is we use seven statistically validated sciences rather than just one. The challenge with using only personality is there is no correlation between personality and success. Um, you can be an extrovert or an introvert and be equally as successful. So personality has less than a 0.3 correlation to success. So why use it to determine where you're going to be successful? There are much better sciences that will let you know. Things like uh, values and alignment with the right business is going to tell you more. What are your values? Where do you align? Cultural fit. Is this something that fits for you? Stage of growth. Where do you belong if you're buying a franchise or a license uh, or a distributorship or a dealership, um, where are they in the stage of growth? You're going to fit differently uh, there. And then, of course, your competencies, both those hard competencies and soft uh, competencies. These are greater predictors of fit and greater predictors of performance. Yeah, we want to know personality. You know, that will help us with communication and conflict management and kumbaya right? But it doesn't tell us where do I belong, you know, and where am I going to be successful, which is what every entrepreneur is looking for. And in our case, our companies that are our clients are looking for, is this person going to fit? Is this person going to be successful? Oh, that's wonderful. I didn't realize that personality only plays such a, such a small role, an important role, but such a small component of the overall picture. Mm -hmm. um, I know, again, as I teed up in, in the introduction here of the podcast, that you are really focused into the franchise industry. Do your services uh, ex uh, uh, expand out to businesses in general uh, or people in general who want to use this? That doesn't, that's not, not necessarily in the franchise world? It does. And any good entrepreneur knows you want to go deep before you go wide, right? Um, to really become a specialist in a particular niche. So Zoracle has chosen uh, the niche of franchising and the business model of franchising. However, um, it also works if it's a distributorship, dealership, licensee. It's all about working a business under some kind of umbe umbrella or operational uh, system. And then we also look at um, key employees within someone's uh, business. So um, that could be uh, real estate agents and stockbrokers and insurance brokers, but folks that are running their own business uh, to see if they're uh, what they need to be successful and who they need to build a team with, right? So they're a good fit with them. So a lot, of, a lot of our listeners are executives that are working in corporate America, and they're kind of listening to these podcasts thinking, should I be an entrepreneur? Would this be a tool that they would benefit by just taking on their own with you? I think it's an excellent tool for just that. Take the assessment on the ZorcalProfiles.com site. Take it with Rich. Rich can also move you through it. It will let you know if you are wired <laughs> to be an entrepreneur uh, or franchisee or something else, or you should keep your corporate job. You're a great ladder climber. You're going to be most successful doing that. So it does answer that question. I think I think there are two questions every wannabe entrepreneur asks themselves. One, do I have what it takes 
to be an entrepreneur, to be a business owner? The tool answers that question. Secondly, if so, what's the right business for me to either start or buy and build? Um, and it answers that question, especially you've also get the help uh, of Rich through that process. So absolutely take the assessment, uh, determine, uh, do you have what it takes? All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit because you do the spot on. So there's, it's, it's, it's appropriate. Is there just sharing one thing? Is there one thing that characteristic of someone said, you know, I took this test. Should I be an entrepreneur? Is there, is there one thing that pops out over and over again when people take this test of leaning, moving the needle towards or away from being an entrepreneur? Yes. Yes. It's funny because I've I've been asked that question a lot recently. I don't know why just now recently people are thinking of this. Um, so we measure a ton of different markers and there is there are five markers that consistently will show up of those that are going to make great franchisees, great entrepreneurs, great business owners. Uh, and those are uh, grit markers, things like optimism, achievement drive, commitment, uh, initiative. Um, so all of these markers, oh, and optimism, the most important one, right? We got to have a little optimism in there too. So these grit markers are really good at determining uh, if you have the wiring to be an entrepreneur. I mean, obviously grit will let you do whatever is necessary to get where you're uh, going, right? It keeps that momentum going even through the difficult times. And trust me, as an entrepreneur, we all know there are difficult <laughs> times that we have to navigate. So those are the markers, those five markers consistently uh, show up. You know, that's so helpful because in my side of the business, uh, I always tell people, which we're going to talk about here in the third segment, Segment, if some of the things that are going on in the world uh, bother you and you don't have the right mindset, then you should probably not be an entrepreneur because it's not this just this year we've had these trials. We have them all the time, all throughout history, But the, which leads me into this third part of the show. Okay, so we are in 2023. We are carrying over a lot of 2022 stuff. Uh, labor shortages, in increased wages, uh, you know, political unrest, wars, inflation, high interest rates, all this stuff that's happening in one time. But you're a founder. You're you have to you have run a company. You're navigating this crazy time. How are you? How are you perceiving this? Is this a time to grow? Is this time to expand, add a new revenue stream, or is this a time to hunker down and retreat? How are you navigating these? Uh, uh, events for your business? I think a true entrepreneur sees these moments as opportunity. I All the things you listed, I don't even see oftentimes other than in my calculations of how I'm going to do my marketing and the team I'm going to build and the products I'm going to streamline. But I always see downturns as crazy opportunities. For me, and I think other entrepreneurs, um, the, this is the time that I find the most um, creativity, the most, you know, I invent things during this time, because if I'm looking at the problems out there, whatever those problems are, there's got to be in my mind, a way to solve them. A problem is not presented without a solution. If we get hung up on the problem rather than on the solution, we might miss an opportunity for a new business, a new product, a new uh, service. So for example, what I'm noticing in my business is that my clients, the franchisors, the franchise brokers, thought leaders in this space, their closing time is elongating, right? It's taking longer to close a deal. Great, let's come up with a tool that predicts that let's come up with a tool that lets you know what is causing that because it's different in one client over another. Um, I call it emotional, social, relational, and financial risk factors. So let's create a tool that measures that and gives our franchisors 
and our franchise brokers and other clients an opportunity to see what the risk factors are for this potential entrepreneur and how to help them navigate uh, through that. A first-time entrepreneur may step out more cautiously, but if we can give our clients tools to take that person through those fear moments and move them into the learning process and the due diligence process of should I buy a business, should I start a business, then I've helped them. But if that problem hadn't existed, I wouldn't have invented a new thing. So to me, this is opportunity screaming from the mountaintops. Yeah, you are such an optimist. I love it. <laughs> That's really great. <laughs> um, and you're right. I mean, I think once you, once you get over the hurdle, whether you should be an entrepreneur or not, Assuming you're in that entrepreneur box, the saying in business is the best time to start a business is now. Uh, but that's sometimes hard to do when you have a lot of these crazy headwinds out there. So the tools that you have come up with are really helpful to all of us. All right. But you're also a human being. OK, uh, you got to get yourself motivated. You have to get up on Monday morning. You gotta leave the charge. You got to listen to that small whisper. What are things you do for yourself to keep yourself uh, motivated, to keep yourself on track uh, so you are uh, a good, successful founder CEO? Oh, that's really easy, uh, Rich. Um, I know who I work for, right? And so every day I go about my father's work. Uh, so that's a big mission that I have been put in charge of my little component of it. I am purpose driven. You need to find that purpose in what you are doing. So it's easy for me to work the long hours, take the risk because it's not my business, right? I am simply going about my father's work. So I don't have a problem with motivation or excitement or passion um, because I've been entrusted with something and I certainly don't want to let my dad down right so to speak <laughs> so that's quite motivating when you when you think about it um, and if there's ever a day where I'm like oh I'm so tired I just don't want to you know then I go back to that you know quiet space again it's kind of like plugging into an electrical circuit and recharging some time, whether that's in your prayer closet or or meditation or a, a meal you sit down and just indulge in while you recharge. Uh, but it really happens uh, to me. I, I know what I'm called to do, and I feel blessed that I've been called to do it. Well, and he called you to do something that fits who you are, who he made you to be. And it's a nice uh, synergy there. Um, how much stake do you put in self-care? There, there is where I'm weak is in the self-care. Um, and that's on my list, Rich, <laughs> to, to get better at that. I think when we're this passionate, um, we go and go and go. So I'm having to learn that. Yesterday was my birthday. I took a whole day off work and I honestly don't remember the last time I've done that. And I felt like a princess. I didn't do much, but I felt like a princess. And it really is an important aspect of entrepreneurship um, is that you take care of yourself, right? You're the heartbeat. And so you have to take care of the heart. Very good. Happy birthday on behalf of all our listeners here to you. Uh, Thank you. I'm glad you had such a great time. Rebecca, this has been wonderful. How can um, our listeners get a hold of you should they want to inquire more about your services? A couple of ways. Um, LinkedIn, of course, Rebecca Monet uh, on LinkedIn. I'm only Rebecca Monet in the world, so you can find me. Um, ZorcalProfiles.com, um, my website. And of course, Rebecca at Zorkle, Z O R A K L E dot net would be another way to get hold of me. Right. And we'll put all that information in the show notes. Uh, the show will be aired on all podcast platforms uh, in about two, three weeks, as well as on our YouTube station. Rebecca, I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your busy day. It's been such a joy to get to know you deeper and for you to be willing to share your wisdom with our listeners. My pleasure, Rich. Thanks for asking.
Well, you're welcome. I hope you have a great day. Rich LeBron here. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, Get It Done Entrepreneurs. If you are a successful business owner who would like to be on this program, please visit us at rlebrun.com forward slash podcast and fill out the form and we will reach out to you. If you got something out of this interview, would you share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show. Include the hashtag Get It Done Entrepreneurs. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure you don't miss any episodes, go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, rlebrun.com, or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time.